Hey, everybody. Endurance. I'm Mike. That's Tommy. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Kevin is not here, but welcome to the Crack Podcast, the Definitive Mighty Ducks Podcast. We are back. We have a very special guest on this episode. We have Christopher V. Nelson. He's the hockey coordinator from Mighty Ducks Game Changers and a bunch What's of other on? things. Also, yes. was Coach Mitch. Uh, he had his little line and he put the hat on. Hey. D- Four episodes. Coach four Twitch episodes. Four episodes. Okay. One word, four episodes, okay? <laughs> <laughs> How many takes did you have to do for that endurance? Uh, I think I did one, but I actually was, I go, was it endurance? Was it energy? Was it efficiency? What was the word? Hey, Sway, what's the word again? She's like, it's endurance. I'm being coached <laughs> by a 14-year-old girl. Let me know where my lines are. <laughs> it's one word. Yeah. So you didn't have a lot of say in that team name, I imagine? No, no, that was uh, Josh, um, not Josh Demel, Josh, uh, our showrunner's name, um, Goldsmith. Uh, Dennis Goldsmith, yes, Josh and Kathy. Uh, they wrote that well in advance. So I was upset because the problem I had with Goldsmith is like, why is endurance not winning the whole thing? Because if it was my team that was coaching, we would have beat them, <laughs> we beat, we beat them all. Yeah. But I mean, I guess it didn't go with the storyline. No one really cares. Oh, the endurance won. So if Ducks finished in third place and Dominic finished in you know, fifth place, you don't really have much of a story. So I had to well, go and let the show winner have his way with that one. <laughs> In, endurance is, of course, the uh, what's his name? Shackleton, the uh, the famous Antarctic explorer who was like that, um, <laughs> you know, it's always taught in leadership classes. So really, you would have been the best coach if you were on endurance, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I, I clearly was the best coach. But, you know, with the magic of Hollywood and Disney, they just kind of cut that part out. And they went with, you know, a different storyline that I really didn't have much say in. <laughs> yeah well sometimes you just gotta be you know uh, a good soldier there yeah yes exactly you got to, i took one for the team mm-hmm. so <laughs> that's, that's what happened <laughs> yeah obviously i guess i had a couple of questions first of all was there any like direction you had a little like fist bump fist pump in there was there any direction or was that all you you know <laughs> going for it it's funny they, they uh they rehearsed a couple of times and i think there was what there was josh Demel had dominate and they went to like two other coaches Mm-hmm. But it came around to me and then had, so I think there was eight teams, right? So with Josh, three coaches, then me and then three other coaches and they finished with Ducks. So it's funny, you know, I started with Josh. He's like, yeah, dominate. And we're all looking around like, okay, what am I going to do next? And <laughs> endurance. Yeah, I think it was endurance. And then the other girl, she's like, yeah, we're this team. Yeah. And then, you know, obviously, Lauren Graham's like, Mighty Ducks. So everyone had a little thing. We just kind of walk in. I'm like, I guess it, it, here it is. It is what it is. I mean, when you're doing little little one lines like that, it, it's we're not doing Shakespeare. You know, I didn't right. think I was going to win an Emmy for you know <laughs> best scene with under you know five words. So we just kind of went for it, threw it out there. And if the director didn't like it, they go, okay, let's do it with a little bit less energy. There was one character, and I'm not going to tell who it was right now. But if you guys talk me to it, I might be able to say who he is. This guy was over the top. I mean, everything mm-hmm. we did from when, he, when we were, uh, the balls came out of the, the little spin, the little uh, power ball thing, when that came out, you know, he came out and got his balls like, yes! yes! <laughs> <laughs> and we're looking around like, wow, he's really into the scene, I guess. Really liked having that uh, number five overall pick or something. <laughs> Yeah, and he was funny. I mean, I, I forgot his name. I'm sorry, but I'll, I'll give it up. He's the he's the character that was the love interest for Coach Cole's secretary. Oh, Toby. He played Toby. Toby, yes, yes, Toby. Yeah. So you know, Toby they had that little slow pan, and then they're out by the uh, by the lake, and he's kind of talking to her soft. And I mean, he was that kind of character. He was Toby, and uh, I forgot the, the the secretary's name, his sister's name, Marnie. And, and Marty, they literally stole the show as far as like minimal characters. They were great. They were absolutely mm-hmm. phenomenal. Yeah, that is awesome. Do they, you know, you're the hockey coordinator. Are they just like looking for people on set to be these sort of like background coaches? Like, how do you get onto the screen from being the hockey coordinator? Um, so, I mean, we can go back to my background. We'll probably get back to that at some point in time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we will, I won't say it now until you guys ask me for it. But I've done so many of these shows, and I just know that, you know, when they give me the task, at first, like, I come on set, they're like, okay, who is this guy? He's from Los Angeles. He's African-American. He's our hockey coordinator. This doesn't make sense. And then they realize really quickly who I am. They see my, you know, my background, and they read up on me. They go, oh, he's a real deal. 
once they have confidence in who I am, it's literally like, okay, Chris, go do what you want to do. We're not worried about you. We understand you know your stuff. We're going to move on to set deck and locations and wardrobe and props. So we'll, we'll, we'll work on that because you know your stuff. So once they have the confidence of them, I can kind of pick and choose whoever I want to put in certain scenes. Mm. Um, it gets a little bit tricky when you start adding dialogue. When you do a movie, I've learned it's easier to add dialogue and ad lib stuff. But on a scripted show, they don't really have a lot of room for interpretation for, hey, come on in. Here's, here's a couple of words. It's, it's a little a little tighter niche. Seems like with, with movies or film, the budget seems a little bit bigger. And when you're doing you know, a TV show, it's a little bit tighter. And then if you're getting someone lines, then you have to get producers acknowledgement of it. But then you go down the rabbit hole of, you know, they get upgraded their pay, then you have residuals and it gets really kind of funky. So, uh, you know, I, I can kind of pick and choose who I put in certain scenes in front of the camera, but to give dialogue to somebody, that's very rare in a scripted TV show. Mm-hmm. So did you get anything extra there? They're just like, hey, there's going to be like a, a couple extra cookies in your trailer at the end of the night for that one word. <laughs> well, the it's, it's funny when, the, you know, Goldsmith came to my office and goes, uh, Chris, so you'd be Coach Mitch. I'm like, okay, great. I look at the script. I'm like, Coach Mitch, all right? Coach Mitch. Coach Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> Endurance. All right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> One word. Okay, great. Yeah, you got me. Um, that's kind of how it went down. Um, and, uh, you know, it's they, they had the, the characters written in, in the show, so it wasn't like they created the character. So Coach Mitch was always kind of there. Um, they just needed someone, and they're like, look, you are a hockey coordinator. Here's the gift to you. You've, you've, you've kicked ass on this. Go for it. Do your thing. And, you know, it was funny how that one word turned into episode 203, which is the you know, third episode of the season, fourth episode of the season, fifth episode of the season, I think sixth episode of the season. So I think I have four episodes credited as guest starring for one word. Incredible. And, and so did they tell you anything about Coach Mitch or was like, you're just playing yourself or this like, did you come up with like a backstory of like, <laughs> all right, this is who Coach Mitch is and this is why he's here. Well, it's funny that when they gave me Coach Mitch, I discussed it like uh, Sway uh, on the show. She's 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 my best friend. She, I mean, she's she, she's great. Her 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 family's great. They always come and hang out. They're phenomenal people. Sway and I discussed having a Sway Coach Mitch spinoff. No, oh. like Laverne and Shirley. I like you know, it. Like in Happy Days, you have Laverne and Shirley. You know, you have uh, Cheers, and you have. Um, that show in Seattle, whatever that show that was. So we talked about having a spinoff. It's possible. I mean, season three isn't going to happen, unfortunately. So maybe we could talk Disney into doing a spinoff of it and to continue the franchise. Right. Where where would the setting be? Is it going to be like in Minnesota, in LA? Well, I think it would be great if we did it either Hawaii or a <laughs> European tour. Nice. Mm. And so basically we shoot all the exteriors on location. Right. Okay. And then we shoot all the, the stuff, everything that needs to be done with dialogue on stage. So we could go to a whole European tour. We could go to the Coliseum in Rome. We could go to the Eiffel Tower, walk across the Linden Bridge. Maybe go see, uh, you know, Chelsea play, you know, in, mm-hmm. in, in, uh, in, in, in soccer, or football. And we do all that stuff exterior. So we do like a four month exterior tour and then shoot our dialogue on stage. I think that'd be perfect. Yeah, I agree. I, I think the, you know, the, the real pull point for that is you only get one word per episode. <laughs> so yes, you got to make yeah, it count. Yeah. And uh, it just oh, is absolutely. always like, like if you're after the Chelsea match, you got to be like, oh, like wanker. And then <laughs> yeah. when you're at the Coliseum, yeah. it could be, you know, I don't know, you know, Caesar. Yes, Caesar, nice. yes. Yeah. All right. I, yes. I, I'm, I'm just a one word character every single episode. I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll email Josh Goldsmith as soon as this conversation is over. I go, Josh, let's make it happen. Let's do this. Yeah. And be like, on, Josh, Kathy. this won't take that much time to write. I got one word an episode. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd be this, the, the sway. She's the leader of it. And I just kind of come in as, you know, I, I'm like the, like the barista in Friends. Mm. You know, I, I come yeah. in, hey, yo, yo, I have reaction shots like that. I'm totally cool with that. Okay. I'll be number 17 on the call sheet. Cool. Fair enough. Yeah, it. Sway is really gonna have to carry this show, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she can't. She, she's got some acting chops. I'm sure she can do it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So let let let's back up now. So 
Look at your IBDB. You've been in this since like 1989. You've been credited with doing stunts. You have a whole company, (laughs) HockeyForHollywood.com. How do you get into this? And how does this sort of emerge for you as like the thing that you do where you're the Hollywood hockey guy? You know, it's uh, I have to uh, attribute a lot of it to Jack White because, you know, he was... He was the me before, I guess me. I, I guess mm-hmm. um, he, you know, did a he did a, a lot of. He was a, a an artist, um, I guess, and he also had a son uh, or a stepson, Eric Lamarck. Um, we both played hockey against each other, and then on the same team together. Um, and he was the one who, you know, I watched him. He was my coach, and he would say, "Hey, we're gonna you know teach Rob Lowe how to skate in young blood." Okay, great. So here I am with Rob Lowe at I think it was. 14, 15 years old, uh, working with Rob Lowe. And then I met, you know, Chad Lowe, Rob Lowe's brother. And mm-hmm. Chad Lowe and I did an episode on Bones together. He was directing and I was the hockey coordinator on that one. So it kind of we came full circle with that. But Jack White was the one that kind of got me into it. And uh, I, I just kind of fell in love with it. And, you know, I went off to play juniors and went to play college and played pro. And when I got out of the pro, for the most part, I came back to LA. And uh, Jack called me and he said, hey, uh, I'm doing a TV show. Uh, do you want to, you know, participate in it? I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. A TV show, great. What do you need to do? He goes, we well, need to go down to Santa Monica. You need to be down there uh, at about 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, someone will meet you. They'll get you your trailer, and you can just hang out and relax. They'll come call you when they need you. Sure enough. So I had my hockey gear with me. I had ice skates, rollerblades. I didn't know what was going on exactly. Got my car, drove down to Santa Monica. They had Mr. Nelson, yes, here's your trailer. Go ahead and just hang out there. Um, there's some wardrobe in there, some shorts, some T-shirts. Put those on. We'll call you when you're ready. Sure. Seven o'clock in the morning, that's what I did. About 7.45, I got off my trailer. Mr. Nelson, we need you on set. Sure. I opened my, my trailer door, and there is 80 of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. And the first major thing I did was Baywatch. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah. I, 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 could, I could get into this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so I never really knew what the show was. I mean, I, ne- I never really watched Baywatch. I was like, okay, well, show? Yeah, I'll go down there. Jack would call me for this show, that show to work with this actor and help him out. And so when Jack calls, I went down there and makes you know, I'm on the set of Baywatch. So I'm like, this is cool. And that's where my career just kind of took off. I talked to uh, Yasmin Bleeth and Alexandra Paul. Um, and you know, I was like, how do you get into this? And they kind of blew me off. Like, you have to go get an agent. Mm-hmm. Okay. How do I do that? They go, look, kid, just, just open the, the yellow pages and get an agent. All right. So we shot the show. I went home. I opened Yellow Pages. That's what we had back then. There was no Google. You couldn't, right. you couldn't hop online and do it. Open Yellow Pages. I found an agency, Bobby Ball. It's like I called them. I go, hey, I'm looking for a representation. They go, uh, we're not really taking any new clients, but if you want to come down and meet us, that'd be great. And I got in my car the next day. I drove down. There was a little four by six picture of me and I walked in there and I, they said, can we help you? Well, I'm Chris Nelson. They go, the, Chris, the hockey guy? I'm like, yeah. And I saw a guy poke his head out around the door was, you play hockey i'm like yeah are you, are you any good again yeah, i'm pretty good i play pro all right well here's the an address what's this address and you can audition for us <laughs> to make a long story short i went and auditioned for it got a call back booked that commercial shot that commercial came back had another audition went shot that commercial i booked that commercial so my first two times going out you know in this industry i booked two national commercials i go i was i'm locked this is what i want to do <laughs> It's like, man, this is easy. There. It's a lot <laughs> was, easier than you know, was, than hockey. Oh, it was, it was great. It was like, this is the easy. You just go down there and tell them about yourself. So they look at you and you go book a commercial and make, you know, 50 grand. This is awesome. And then I did a Nike. I had a Nike audition. I went, Nike, this is great. Nike, oh, they, they like all the obscure, weird, strong, you know, unique athletes. Like the Andre Agassiz and, the, right. you know, all that stuff was going on. I'm like, oh, this is a shoe in I got this one for sure. And I went to the audition and waited for the callback. Never got a callback. Hmm. Call my agent. I go, uh, I never got a callback. What, what movie is this, does this thing shoot? He's like, oh, they already shot that. I go, what do you mean they already shot that? I didn't get it. Like, no, no, you didn't get it. What do you mean I didn't get it? Then I realized the reality of how this whole system works. It is literally they were going for a certain look. And at that point in time, they were doing a Sergey Fedorov Nike hockey commercial. And back then, there weren't a lot of African Americans that played ice hockey, so I didn't get that commercial because I didn't fit the the look of what the NHL was back then. And that's where I realized, oh, now I see how this whole this, this system works. It's timing, it's personality, it's talent, and it's a look. 
Mm-hmm. And I had everything. I just had to look at Nike one at that point in time. And that was it. But then Nike did, did come back a couple years later and they cast me in a huge Nike campaign that I was the hockey player for Michael Vick. Um, oh. it, was a, it was called What If. It was, a, it was an incredible uh, campaign that Nike did. It was a Serena Williams was playing volleyball. Lance Armstrong was boxing. Andre Agassi was playing baseball and Brian Urlacher and Michael Vick were playing hockey. Hmm. And it was a whole, like, what if these players didn't choose the sport that they were in? See, Brian Urlacher and hockey equipment is frightening. <laughs> I, I just let him score. Just like, like you can. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, the athleticism of Michael Vick. If Michael Vick had played hockey instead of football, I mean, who knows what the sport would be like? I mean, yeah. it's just. Just his, I mean, I'm not talking about a sort of past. It is what it is. He made some wrong right. decisions. Um, uh, unfortunately, two of the four, two of the five athletes I mentioned, <laughs> actually, I think Marion Jones was in that too, uh, that, that campaign. Mm. She was a gymnast. So a lot of them made some, some bad decisions in their careers. But as far as an athlete, uh, you take Urlacher, you take Michael Vick, if those guys played hockey, it'd be a completely different sport. Right, right. So you mentioned Jack White. We've had Jack White on a couple times, yep. and you were talking before. <laughs> you he had you come out to the original Mighty Ducks and help out. Yes, yeah. What yep. did you do on those you know original films? Uh, so I was kind of like the the guinea pig type thing. Like Jack would say, "Look, if Chris can do this, you guys can do this." And uh, I think it was Keenan Thompson. Uh, he was out there. And him and I actually worked on a, another show, Good Burger. Um, mm. I don't th- was he in Good Burger? Oh, yeah, yeah. Kel was in Good him Burger. and Kel. Yeah, yeah. So Kel was in Good Burger, and Keenan was in Good Burger, and so Keenan and I met doing Ducks, and then came back, back around, and we did Good Burger. I was the hockey coordinator on that one, and Keenan. It's when uh, Keenan's skating with his dreads, and he comes down the ramp and does all those little spins and stuff. That's I trained Keenan all that kind of stuff. So basically. I was the one who would demonstrate all the drills and Jack would, he knew I would go through the wall for him. He's like, look, I can tell Chris to go jump off a bridge and he'd do it. And so Jack would go, all right, Chris, go, go, go and do it. Make it happen. Okay. And I would do all these drills and then these drills then would pop up. And there's some of the stuff you see in the montage sequences of uh, all Mighty Ducks uh, one, two, and three. Incredible. And so they don't care if you get hurt. I mean, they, like Jack probably cared, but it's like, hey, if Chris gets hurt, I guess we shouldn't do that stunt. <laughs> I was I was a fifteen year old kid. You don't get hurt at fifteen. It just doesn't happen. Right. At, exactly. At fifty four, you get hurt. But <laughs> at, at fifteen, it's like go you got jump off the wall, do this. And I did some crazy stuff back then. I was I was very flexible. But now that I've gotten a little bit older, I go here's what I want you guys to do, and I pull the Jack White. Hey, show them what to do. <laughs> That's what I'm doing now. <laughs> Yeah. And, and so quick kind of offshoot of that. So in the 90s, you know, you're a teenager, you know, you're kind of coming into, you know, adulthood, things like that. Mighty Ducks come out and hockey is all of a sudden a little bit more up the food chain a little bit. What do you recall about that time and like and, and hockey in, in general and what the Mighty Ducks kind of did for that in the 90s? And did you see like more kids wanting to come up to you and like say, like, tell me about your job or, or what, what was that like for you? It, it's gotten more like that after Miracle, mm-hmm. um, you know, prior to Miracle, I was, I was like the guy behind the scenes. So I was the one, I wasn't the, the, the boss, but I was the one that would demonstrate all the stuff, get all that stuff done. Um, and it wasn't, you know, until Miracle that, you know, once the, the, the documentary came out and the Make It a Miracle and people were saw, oh my God, it's Chris Nelson. And it says, you know, on the title of hockey, you know, uh, technical advisor. Um, that's when you really got to see like a, a, little, a lot of inquiries about what, I, so what is that I do and how I do it. Um, every show is different. I mean, every commercial is different. Sometimes I had a luxury with Miracle and we did two years of research and watching all those films and you know, getting prepared and handpicking all those players from all over North America. I mean, I, 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 we had a major casting in Los Angeles, but we were in Vancouver, we were in Boston, we were in uh, Minnesota, uh, where else? Um, uh, we, only, uh, we did two in Vancouver, two in Los Angeles, Boston, Minnesota, and scoured the planet to try to find these kids. And we, we had to have the right accent, the right look, the right, uh, the correct handedness for Eruzioni. You couldn't have a right-handed kid, you know, with a 
Michigan accent be Michael Ruzioni. He had to find the right Boston mm-hmm. kid. And Patrick Dempsey, he killed that. He was the last kid we found. Um, you know, you, you had to have the right uh, look for, you know, Kenny Morrow. He had to have all the right guys. And we, were, we had the luxury of finding all those guys. It was, a, it was a big, big picture. On a commercial, you might have a day or two to make it happen. On a TV show, you might have the luxury of a couple of weeks. So it all depends on what the, uh, what the, what the production is. Is is how deep you can really, really get in, sink your teeth into it. So you men- you mentioned Miracle. I want to talk briefly because I know a lot of our, our listeners are you know, obviously um, kind of core millennials, and so grew up with millennial or with Miracle happening already, and then the movie. Um, and so when you're casting for a true story, you know you mentioned obviously you have the authenticity. Do you have to like kind of tell your your actors, all your doubles, like, look, you know, you may want to skate a certain way, but you know, Mikey Rosioni he would never do that in real life. So, and then also when you're doing with the filming, do you have to really, do you try not to take as many creative liberties or, or what's the process there when you're dealing with, you know, fic- fiction versus like a nonfiction based story? With the nonfiction like Miracle, I'd be very careful because Miracles on Ice, I think was the one that came out in like 1982. And from what I heard, the background is that the players weren't really that happy with, with the production, that it didn't really, you know, show what they went through, the, the dedication, the hard work to you know to beat the russians and beat finland and sweden and germany and win the gold medal so uh i had to be very very you know correct with my authenticity the accuracy of watching every single film i mean every single game now a game is you know could be two hours long the film is two hours long so i can't take every single play from every single game because we have you know, a 14 hour film so i had to take certain key components that you know a goal scored here uh a penalty there, a missed opportunity there. I had to take all those key po- components that felt right within the script and the storyline to make it uh, authentically correct, to make it interesting for the audience and make it able to shoot, um, which was, uh, it was a very, very difficult task, but we had two years to go and go after it. Yes, there were some creative liberties. You know, when you have a guy, um, um, oh, I can't believe, I forget his name. Uh, the... Oh God, one of the players, his son actually played his dad in the film, right. which was really cool. I mean, this kid came across the ice, he skated like the wind. And I'm like, what's your name? He told me his name and I was like, oh, it was, it was Snyder, uh, Bud Snyder, I think. Um, and it was like, are you related to, he's like, yeah, it's my dad. I'm like, okay. If you can stand on your skates, you're going to be in this film. And the kid skated like the wind. Um, he, you know, he was probably about five foot four, and I think his dad was probably about six foot two. So we took a creative liberty there. But I mean, how can you not put the, the kid's son, you know, in, 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 in the film to, to play his dad, which was it was a no brainer. Uh, the film was it, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of hard work, but it was extremely successful. So we move on from Miracle. How does Mighty Ducks Game Changers Season 2 come to you? <laughs> um, the Steve Brill, who was the, I think, original, he was the original show creator of all of the, the three series. Right. And with uh, Season 1 and Season 2, he, I, just, I just finished shooting Your Place or Mine, the Aston Kutcher movie with Mr. Witherspoon, that came out on Friday. Right. So I just finished shooting that, and... Uh, I think I just shot a T-Mobile commercial and Steve Brill called me out, out, of, the, out, of, out of nowhere and said, hey, Nelly, it's Steve. I'm like, hey, what's up, man? He goes, hey, so uh, I'm doing this Mighty Ducks Game Changers TV series. Have you heard of it? Yeah, I heard of you guys in season one. We shot in Vancouver. He's like, well, we're down in Los Angeles. Do you want to be part of this? He goes, absolutely. Okay, great. Uh, let me get you in contact with ABC, uh, Disney. They'll contact you. Get your contract all set up and you'll be good to go. And I figured at that point, I'm mean, like, wow, I mean, I guess all the stuff I've done, the, the Tooth Fairies, the Love Gurus, the Miracles, the, the um, Senseless, the Batman and Robins, I guess they've all kind of, you know, showed up at my MDB and people now realize that I'm actually the, the real deal. So it was kind of great to walk in to that show with the, the confidence of the entire, you know, cast and crew. Like, he's the guy, he knows his stuff. So it, 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 was, it was the first time I've actually walked into a production. I didn't have to, like, prove myself mm-hmm. per se um it's 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 imagine that you have a boss that changes out every single every single six months 
And that's what my life is like. I have a new boss in, okay, great. I have to prove myself to the boss. What is it that I do, how I do it? He has to observe me and to get his full confidence. This was the first show that I actually walked in on set. And I already had the full confidence of the cast crew, the producers, um, and obviously Disney. They already knew I did Mighty Duck. I already did uh, uh, Miracle. So like, oh, if he did Miracle, we saw Miracle. Okay, yeah, check. He knows his stuff. And then it was it was easy transition to, to walk on that on that show. Mm-hmm. I would just so, what was, oh go ahead go ahead no okay so we'll get into it but Josh Jumel good skater or bad skater. Josh Jumel played hockey, I think, up to like the high school level, and then he got involved in football and had it, hadn't skated since. So as far as all the actors, also I can say this, all the actors on set, I would have to say Brady Noon was the best one. Uh, Josh Jumel came second. Uh, then you've got Tegan and Sway and DJ, uh, Maxwell, Luke, and they kind of all trickled down from there. The only person that didn't skate was Lauren Grant. Um, mm-hmm. We were going to put her in skates and they changed the scene up a little bit. And we just, I think it was episode seven. And we just, we didn't write it in and she didn't skate. And she's like, okay, cool. I don't got to skate. I don't got to skate. But all the actors did skate and Josh could play the game. I mean, he, Josh isn't going to walk into, you know, be a first round draft pick in the NHL. <laughs> but for the purpose of his character, that he was ex professional, that he, and that was able to skate and do his thing. He came in and he did the job. I was more upset, and Josh can agree. And he pulled in his trailer that the first time you see Josh Demo skating, when he kind of comes around the boards and comes out and does that little pirouette, that spin, the way they cut it, they made it look like it was a double that did that. And Josh mm-hmm. was bummed about that. I was bummed about that because he worked so hard for it and he did it flawlessly, but they have a long shot of Josh, which, which could be anybody. It could have been me, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> and then they cut to his lower body, and he says he skates through and then spins around and stops, and they cut to his upper torso. I looked at him and looked at me. It's like, that makes no sense because you did all that skating. He goes, yeah, I did all that skating, and they didn't even use it. <laughs> so he was kind of bummed about that. I was kind of bummed about that, but yes, Josh DeVault could skate. Excellent. Go. Well, he, we knew he was a football player. And so I guess this is the what if. What if he had chosen hockey instead yeah. of football? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's, he's definitely an athlete. I mean, we, we pushed him. Hockey endurance is a little bit different than football endurance, as Josh learned pretty fast the first day. And he said it, so I can repeat it. But we skated Josh pretty hard the first day that he had to find a, a trash can to um, help himself. <laughs> <laughs> per se, because uh, he, we, we worked him pretty hard that first day, but he 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 he, he did everything that we asked of him. Mm-hmm. What were some uh, what are some good drills to do if you're an actor and you got like two weeks of boot camp, boot camp both on the ice and off ice to get you better? <laughs> to be a hockey player, or to be to get that little of cardio, that endurance, so you're not puking between takes. <laughs> uh, uh, of, of all the sports, I have to say hockey is the only sport you cannot fake. Um, it's the, the, you're, you're standing on, you know, a half inch of steel that's elevated by two inches of plastic and a boot that is form fitting to your foot, but you have to propel yourself in a forward, backward, and sideward motion with a stick and a little black rubber disc that people are trying to knock you off of as you try to put it in the opposing team's goal. Okay, football, pretty much anybody can run and catch right. um, and block. Throwing, as we saw in, you know, with certain actors, throwing the football, it's not as easy. Uh, but you can fake throwing a football opposed to stick counting through players. Uh, to answer your question, what kind of cardio you get into for two weeks, good luck. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's got to be on the ice. Yeah. You got to be on the ice, and you know when I when I do a job, when I do, when I do a, a production, I, I tell the producers and the directors that if we're going to do this right, we have to get real hockey players. We can't fake it. Um, yes, in Batman and Robin, we put George Clooney on a dolly and we pulled him around um, <laughs> for you know that whole hockey. Chris O'Donnell skated a little bit. George Clooney did not. Great guy, but he did not skate. Um, Miracle, the first thing I did was I had everybody on the ice and I blew the whistle and I 
So when I blew the whistle, you start skating. When I blow the whistle again, you stop. So I blew the whistle, everyone skated the blue line, I blew it again, they stopped. Anybody that wavered, that wobbled, get off my ice, you're wasting my time. Goodbye. With Ducks, it was a little different because they already had characters that were already established in the show. Right. So I didn't get a chance to pick and choose. And then with the other characters that came in, we had uh, Naveen, who said he skated. And I guess he skated a little bit, but you know, not really to the point of that he's going to be convincing to be a you know a duck stuck you know excellent player but we were able to work with him he worked his ass off and we got him up and running and, and I, I put it up on my uh my instagram uh of naveen when he first started to naveen to where he was halfway through and then I, i'll put in you know naveen to where he finished um he came a long long way and he was determined to be a hockey player and he won over the the enthusiasm and the respect of all the other actors because Naveen was basically the new character coming in. Those mm -hmm. other ones had been there for a full season, so they got to know each other. And they'd all practiced you know, a full you know, season one of playing hockey, where you have Naveen, who comes in, he's the new face. And it's like, okay, I got to catch up to speed. And he did a really good job, but then he worked his butt off. And, and you know, I, my hat goes off to him. Uh, he, he really did impress me. At first, I was kind of worried, like, what are we going to do with this exactly? Because, you know, with Naveen, the glitch part was easy. He... It was, it was easy to shoot that because he was a new player and just hey, swing a stick and I gave him no <laughs> guidance and that's what kind of came out. But then when, you know, came down to you really have to make it happen, you know, he was able to look like a hockey player. We brought in, uh, I think we had three different doubles for him for certain things like the spinorama. We brought in a, a specialist for that. Um, his name was Noah. Right? He did spinorama and backhand crossbar, uh, one take and we were all kind of like, yeah, so we got that moving on. <laughs> That's something we, we couldn't have Naveen do that. We couldn't have Justin, who was one of his other doubles. We couldn't have Andy Wong, who was another one of his job doubles. They couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. But the specialists, you know, Noah came in, did a one take, and we were like, yeah, okay, great. <laughs> Thanks All right, that's lunch. Job easy. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's pretty much what it's like. I mean, uh, you know, the producers and directors looked at me like, did he just do that? Like, yeah, he just did that. <laughs> Can you do it again? Yeah, sure. Can you do it again? Yeah. You went and did it again. We're like, yep, good. All right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, the, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I would never expect an actor to be able to learn a sport that fast. It's impossible. You're never going to be able to learn the sport of hockey within a decent time frame. It takes years and years and years and years and years to be proficient to where you're convincing to be able to be a quote Olympian or a pro or a collegiate or even like a high level high school player. Mm -hmm. So with game changers or really anything, like how much direction is there in these hockey scenes? Like for like the icebreaker, do you have specific mm -hmm. moments you're trying to hit? Or are they just like, make these kids all score a goal in a, in a way and we'll get down <laughs> to these final two. Like how does that collaboration work? <laughs> so Josh, Josh Goldsmith and I talked long about this. The way Josh wrote the, the icebreaker is literally like the army comes over the hill. The army comes over the hill. Okay, that's what it says on paper. All right, so how do we shoot this? <laughs> okay, we have to have 500 people. We have to have guns. We have mortars exploding. We've got helicopters flying by. This is Armageddon right now. That's what he wants. That's what Cipro, well, that's what he wants to make it look like. But Goldsmith wrote it, the, the army comes over the hill. The ducks enter ice and we have the icebreaker. And I have <laughs> I've got the shorter in my ear. It's gotta be big. This has to be Braveheart. I want carnage. I want people coming in. I want to see heads rolling. I'm like, it's a Disney TV show. I don't <laughs> care. We're gonna have mayhem out there. Okay, so I talked to Brian Avery, who was a stunt coordinator. I was like, all right, here we go. We have a hundred people on the ice. Now, you know, remember, we're shooting a hundred people on the ice during a global pandemic where you have to be 18 years of age and above during the school year and during the hockey season. And we're shooting 40 miles outside of our normal local pool of players. So we shot this in Valencia. We didn't shoot this in El Segundo. We didn't shoot this in Anaheim. So we're shooting in a city that just had their rink closed and reopened it recently. And kids are spread all over the map for hockey. If it was like, okay, great, we can shoot with people that haven't been tested for COVID, 
that have been vaccinated um, that are under 18 years old, I could have had a thousand people out there. But there's such specific requirements that made it real hard. So you have some players that, some people that should not have been on the ice, Mm -hmm. but we put them in deep, 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 deep background. And then we had, you know, the players that could really play the game, the stunt players, they were in there flying around. And we shot that, I think, for four days. They got to get that right. But there was a lot of, like, a lot of hits, a lot of bumps that you saw and stuff that you didn't see uh, to get those scenes. And it was chaotic. It really was. It was, it was a mass, mass chaos. It was, it was so chaotic that um, after we shot the first day, Disney came down and was like, what is going on right <laughs> now? Because I saw the dailies. I'm like, if you want a carnage, you got carnage. So like, okay, well, it's great. But can you write specifically, show us each individual play? I'm like, here's my book. It's all right there. It's all written. Army comes over the hill, icebreaker, carnage on the ice. And we just created it and made it happen. And it, looked, it was a great way to come in for episode one, season two. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, with film or TV, it's not going to be 100% authentic. Like, you have Jace's glitch, which I don't think is, like, a real, you know, thing. So, like... Yeah. How hard is it to accept the fact that, you know, it's not going to look 100% real all the time? <laughs> but we can talk about the knuckle puck. <laughs> yeah, we can talk exactly. About the flying V. We can talk about, uh, what's the, oh, there's another Ducklands in there. Um, oh, uh, Coop scoring a goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can talk about the line of the plant opposite hands. So the four things I mentioned, the only battle that I won was opposite hands. That's the only one. Because mm-hmm. I marched in the, the, to Josh at the Goldsmith's office, and I was like, the line says they're playing left-handed. And Josh is like, yeah, they're playing left-handed. I go, it doesn't work. He's like, what do you mean it doesn't work? What if you're already naturally left-handed? You know? Mm-hmm. So there's no real disadvantage because that whole uh, – Spoiler alert, but that whole scene where Dominate is being ducks in the 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 um, the, the, the camp there. Mm-hmm. And then the whole joke is, you know, at the at the at the cooler, they're saying, Oh, well, we played opposite hands. But originally it was supposed to be left-handed, and I went to Goldsmith's office, like, we can't say left-handed, it has to be opposite hands. And that took like weeks and weeks of going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And finally, Pierce, um, Josh's uh, assistant, uh, said Ghost was with the steel and they brought me in and they go, all right, Chris, you got it. We rewrote that entire thing just for you. Because as a technical advisor, I need to be technically sound of what makes sense. And that made sense. When it came down to the knuckle puck, the flying V and coup scoring, I went into the same enthusiasm as them and Ghost was like, nope, get out. <laughs> nope, <laughs> get out. Um, uh, but they did ask me, my, uh, the writers, I was in the writer's room before we started shooting anything, and they said, is the knuckle puck real? And the knuckle puck actually is real. Uh, you've seen players at all levels shoot the puck when it's on edge, and there's no control, and the puck does kind of float and spin and land a certain way. So it is a real thing. Now, uh, I think knuckle puck was revealed in my Duck's the first movie, I think, right? That's the right. Knuckle Puckle scene. The second one, yeah. And they stop it. The second one, they stop it, they flip it off, and yes. That kind of Knuckle Puck does not work. But the Knuckle Puck, and I actually showed them a real Knuckle Puck, and for this podcast, I'll, I'll put it up, I'll put it on my Instagram again today, okay. um, which it's Christopher underscore V underscore Nelson. I'll put the how we did the Knuckle Puck, and you actually see in slow motion what I designed it to be. So we call it the Knuckle Puck 2020, the, the 2022, the new version, mm-hmm. where a pass comes up, you poke at it, it pops up in the air, it spins, it lands on edge, and then you shoot it. So I've got, uh, we did that in one take. So I'll show you what that, what that looks like. And I'll, if you guys will put it on your, on your, on your Instagram, whatever it may be, I'll, I can send it to you guys. So you can see Perfect. what it actually really looked like. Fantastic. Yeah. That's, that's a true behind the, behind the scenes thing. And I showed that to, to you know, to, to, everybody and they're like that's that's incredible you, you did that i go yeah you actually really shot it that way i'm like yeah it took one take we did that in one take that's that's incredible of course with the magic of, of film when we actually did it 
It came, cut, poked it up, cut, throw in the air, cut, land on the ice, cut, shoot the puck, cut. So they cut it a bunch of different ways. But it, I actually showed them what the knuckle puck actually really can do. And I will actually use a knuckle puck um, in my next couple of films coming up. Uh, mm. I've got a couple of them coming down the pipeline that I'll put the knuckle puck in. We won't call it a knuckle puck, but I'll put it in a play because it's really kind of unique and dynamic if you have a, a player with enough talent uh, and know-how that you could have literally a player coming out to block a shot. You fake the shot, you pop, pop the puck up, the player slides by and lands, and you shoot it. So I'll put that in, in a, 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 my next film. Wow. I like this. Is, Easter. Is, there a, is there a movie that either, or, or show or any kind of piece of media that you've worked on or not worked on that you're just like, that hockey is incredibly accurate and like you got to tip your cap to them, whether you've worked on it or not. Um, I mean, I've done every hockey movie, TV show of any major capacity with the exception of Mystery Alaska, Goon, and Cutting Edge. Those are the three I didn't work on. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Love Guru, uh, um, Tooth Fairy, uh, Batman and Robin, Senseless, uh, Mighty Ducks, obviously, uh, Bones. I mean, it just, it just kind of goes on and on and on and on. And on. Um, most of those other shows, Mr. Alaska and Guna wasn't really about the hockey. Mm -hmm. This is what Guna is more about the, the physical violence of it. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Alaska is kind of the storyline that, you know, the New York team kind of comes in and plays against the local team. So there wasn't really that much hockey that was written into it. Uh, Nothing against those guys that did that. Just wasn't really a lot of, a lot of hockey in it. Um, I mean, accuracy, you know, you, you got to go with Miracle. Uh, obviously, you know, would be number one. I'm not saying because I worked on it, but just I know that everybody that put their hearts and soul in that film, from the writers to the directors to the, the principal performers to the background hockey players to the, the stunts, everything was, was on point. Um, Reality-wise, if you exclude Miracle, you got to go with Slapshot. Mm -hmm. Uh, I played in that rink in uh, Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and that's what it's like. I mean, <laughs> that that rink is literally just like it. It's a it's an old steel town, um, and those fans rally for for that team. And back then, you know, with you know, you had the Broad Street Bullies, and hockey was a lot more violent back then. Um, yes, there were some comedic uh, liberties that they took with it. It wasn't that violent. But as far as with the travel and the life, and you've got you know, some players that are married, some players that are can French Canadian, you have some players that, you know, from all different walks of life. And I, re I realized that when I turned pro, when you're in college, you know, everyone's got to go to school and you're from different, you know, different states. You have some Canadians from different country. We had one uh, guy from Latvia, but you're all kind of there for the same common goal. You play college hockey. When you turn pro, You've got guys that if they don't make the team, they will literally go back to Saskatchewan and pump gas for the rest of their life. So are you either going to be a pro player or are you going to pump gas? And when you're faced with those two options, these guys will literally cut your eyeballs out to make the team. Mm -hmm. So when you see some of those players like in Slapshot that are there for the fight, their job is to fight. And they, they're going to get paid to fight and be a fan favorite and maybe open a car dealership dealership up in that town or they're going to go back to Winnipeg or you know Moncton, New Brunswick or and I'm not saying anything or Regina, Saskatchewan I'm not saying anything bad about these cities right. but you could play pro hockey in Las Vegas or you could be pumping gas in northern Saskatchewan <laughs> yeah you tell me <laughs> yeah so, I mean, you mentioned you obviously had some limitations with Game Changers, with the script and, and whatnot. Like, wh what do you rate those hockey scenes compared to, you know, some of the other projects we worked on? Like, how do you feel about them looking back? <laughs> it's, it's, I get asked that question a lot because, you know, when you do Miracle, and I hate to keep going back to Miracle, Miracle seems to be like a template of like, of, of the new era parent of what hockey, how hockey should be shot. Mm -hmm. And Gavin O'Connor did a great job with that. We had a thousand cameras going. We rolled, you know, millions of feet of film and we got everything. We shot so much film that that the Russians could have won 1980. <laughs> <laughs> you. That's how much that's how much film we shot. I go from Miracle and then I go to Love Guru. 
and I go to one of the greatest hockey movies ever to having to write a scene where I have the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Los Angeles Kings and the Stanley Cup Finals, and there's two elephants having sex on the ice. <laughs> where has my career gone? <laughs> <laughs> so with, with Ducks of the Game Changers, it's a Disney film. Mm-hmm. And I have to take off my technical advisor authenticity hat, put it down, and go, it's a Disney film that's geared towards young adults. Just let it happen. Um, when Coob scores the goal, you know, the, the goose is loose or whatever the, the line is. Mm-hmm. And you see Coob skate down the ice, he stumbles down. And, he, and I, I've, got, I've got background stuff of that, too. I can send that to you guys as well. He comes you know, down and he skates and he, and he shoots and scores. It was weeks of marching in the goldsmith's office and go, you cannot do this. The goaltender cannot cross the red line with the puck. He goes, what do you mean? You can't have the goalie skate down the ice and score a goal. But goals have scored goals before, yeah, because there's an empty net and they turn, they shot it down. He cannot cross the red line. Here is Patrick Waugh. Mm-hmm. Patrick Waugh skated down the ice of the puck and spun around, crossed the red line. Everyone's like, what is he doing? And the ref called, I think, a penalty on that. You cannot do that. A very obscure rule. But Patrick Waugh did that. Anybody who plays the game of hockey knows you cannot do that. Right. Can we at least have the goaltender not pay attention? Coop gets it and shoots it down. It's like, nope, I want the goal to score. Okay. Yeah. You're my boss. Sure. You got it. Right. Flying V, same thing. Flying V, can we not have the players go off sides? That was the biggest thing you you watch, you know, find yeah. me in the in the movies, they're off sides. I go, can we not have them go off sides? So I got away with that a little bit. Um, but it's Melissa Kosar, who was the executive director, she was like, All right, find me, make it happen. And we're shooting in Anaheim. I've got you know 500 extras watching me. I'm like, all right, guys, here we go. Don't be off sides, don't be off sides, don't be off sides. And they <laughs> nailed it. It looked great. Um, and I guess. I, we did like six or seven different takes. And I think that everything was on sides the whole time. And then, of course, you have the knuckle puck. You know, you, you do what you can. It, it's 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 not a it's not a a nonfiction movie, right? So it, you can kind of create some stuff, but you have to kind of give a throwback to uh, the original movies, and that's kind of what we did. And we just kind of spruced it up to a modern twenty twenty two version of it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Tommy, anything else you want to ask before we go to the quiet question? Real quick, you mentioned Batman and Robin. Um, yep. I was when I was looking at your IMDb, I was like, like there was hockey. I was like, no, there was ice skating because, of course, Mister Freeze. Yeah. What was your experience like working on that? You mentioned Clooney being on a, on a dolly, and you know, you were you were a young man then. What was that like for you? Yeah. So i I was playing roller hockey at the beach, I think, and oh, this is a great story. And someone said, hey, uh, you're a pretty good skater. I'm like, thanks a lot. Would you be interested in doing a movie? I'm like, sure. I'd love to be in a movie. They go, okay, great. Well, um, we're going to have auditions. So we want you to audition for us. Great. No problem at all. Now, at that time, I was playing professional roller hockey for the LA Blades. And we were in the playoffs. So I was like, all right, this is, this is, this is big time. Ask me to audition for a movie. Yeah, definitely. Like they told me what it was. It was Batman and Robin. I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna audition for this. So I drove to Burbank and I auditioned this. Auditioned for. I think my audition time was like one o'clock, and we had practice at four. You know LA traffic, so we're <laughs> practicing at the forum. And Mark Hardy is my coach. And I get done with the audition. They go, Chris, this was great. You were amazing. Do you have anyone else that can skate like you? I go, yeah, I got a whole team of guys that can skate just like me. Well, that's amazing. Uh, We'll have them all. If they can skate like you, we trust your judgment. We'll, we'll, we'll put them all in there. We need about, you know, 100 skaters. Go, great, no problem at all. So I'm driving down the, the, the freeway, stuck in traffic. I get to the forum for practice. I show up about five minutes late, and Mark Hardy is like, what are you doing? I go, I had an audition. What do you mean you had an audition? And now Mark Hardy, he was the assistant coach at the LA Kings. He's, he's big time now. Mm-hmm. He goes, uh, he goes, uh, Wait, wait a second. You are auditioning. Do you want to be a hockey player, or are you going to be some kind of actor? I was like, well, we're in the playoffs and we're playing the Bullfrogs, and they're the number one team. So, 
I, I kind of want to want to do this Aki thing. Oh, okay, really good at the Aki thing. Great, you're out. And healthy scratched me that game, and I was you know one of the top you know, three players of the team. So he healthy scratched me and sit in the stands. Fans are like, "Why aren't you playing?" There's a disagreement. We lost that game. I was kind of like bummed that we lost it, but we were no longer in the playoffs, and I was out. And now I get to go work on this film. So I got all the guys together. Hey guys, uh, I got an audition um, and they get to the, say, so I get to pick and choose who I want to be in this movie. They're like, do you guys want to do it? Like, yeah, absolutely. So cut to, we, we audition these kids. They all get in it. All Eric Rice, um, Steve Wilson, Steve Bogievis. Uh, God, there's probably 15 of us that were in this. We spent, three months on set with a Joel Schumacher, uh, Schumacher film with Clooney, O'Donnell, uh, Lisa Silverstone. And we were on the biggest soundstage at Warner Brothers and we ran that show. George Clooney was hot off the ER. Friends was hot. So we would go to the Friends set, hang out there. We just ran the show. I go, this is the best job ever. <laughs> and that's what, that's what really said, this is what I want to do. And it's funny, I get residual checks all the time. You know, from Batman and Robin, I just chuckle like, do you want to be a hockey player or do you want to be an actor? I go, oh, <laughs> this acting thing is working out pretty well. And it's just so funny you mentioned that because Mark Hardy, I saw him yesterday. And he's like, Nelly, I just saw you in that Ashton Kutcher movie. And you're place of mine. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, dude, you're killing it. It's great. And I give it to him all the time. I'm like, yeah, you're the one who was like, you'll be a hockey player or you'll be an actor. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It turned out pretty good for you. Congratulations. <laughs> well, That's you got a full circle. You got to cast him in something. Your next project. Oh. Get him on stream. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'd love to. I'd absolutely love to. He'd love to be in it, too. Uh, the problem is so much of that stuff shoots in Canada, so it's difficult. Um, you, know, if, if, you have to be Canadian. You have to be, have the avail uh, availability of your schedule to be able to fly up there and do that. And unless you're really into the, you know, being an actor or a stunt person, you don't have that, that freedom and you have to be Canadian to film up there. If it's local based, if it's like, a, you know, another Mighty Ducks that could put him in, great. But he mm -hmm. was coaching the team at that point in time and he couldn't take off time to do it. Uh, but yeah, I always put those guys in shows. Perfect. Excellent. Perfect. I'm sure that there's got to be a way to like smuggle him on like a team plane when like the Kings are playing the Senators or something like that. <laughs> and all right, let's, <laughs> that'll, that'll be for the Sway, uh, the Sway coach. Yeah. Mitch. Uh, spin off in Canada. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, hey, if you get enough hits on it, you never know. Right. I mean, coach, coach Mitch and Sway. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Let's we'll have to come, make it happen. Yeah. We'll have to come yeah. up with like a catchy title. And yeah. Yeah. We can work on this. I like this. I like where yeah. this is going. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's easily possible. I mean, it's proper funding and we've already got the acting chops for it. We, we already know that hockey is hot right now. Let's go for it. Yeah. We're in, we're in. We'll work on it. We'll we'll try to secure the funding here. So we'll, we'll get an outline to you. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So we're we're at almost double our normal time. So I do want to wrap this up. But you've been excellent here. No uh, so we do this thing called the quiet question, where we the fans send yep. us questions in, we, and we do our best to try to answer them. We told them that you were coming on. Um. So we All have right. a, we have a quiet question for you. This comes from Captain Conjunction on Twitter. Okay. It says, it seemed yep. that the hockey scenes, with the exception of the final game, were almost all, if not fully all, montages. Was this the intention from the start? And if so, how did that change the way the hockey scenes were approached? Okay, so my job is to get the hockey players, uh, rehearse them, work with the directors, work with the camera operators, make sure that the set is safe uh, for both the actors, the stunt people, and all people in production uh, to make the puck go from point A to point B, make it uh, in a fluid motion to get to where it says player passes puck, player passes puck back, slap shot, goal, slap shot, save, whatever it may be. That's my job. Once my job is done and it's in the can, it then goes to the editor. And the editor will go ahead and chop it up however he feels fit with a director in mind. I'm never in the editing room. I just create the plays, create the action to make it work timing wise on script, to have the right actors in place, have the right sequences happen, to uh, get the director's vision done. And then once that's done, 
then they take it and they chop it up. So if it takes us four days to shoot a hockey scene, that four days of hockey gets chopped up into a 35 second sequence. Mm-hmm. So uh, whether it's montage, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily montage per se, uh, but you just can't fit all that hockey into a half hour episode. You just can't do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, four days of filming, it, 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 it just wouldn't make any sense. Makes sense. Makes Fair sense. enough. Very diplomatic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one one bonus question also. Uh, it says, was it your job to figure out the mechanics of what Jace's shot glitch would be? Like, did you come up with how he, you know, did that? Or is that yes. sort of, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's, when I'm working with professional athletes, it's very difficult to unteach them what they've been taught their entire life. With Naveen, he didn't play a lot of hockey, so he kind of went out there and did his thing, and we kind of worked with it. We 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 went through a lot of Charles Barkley golf swings, <laughs> and that's kind of where we 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 honed in on what Jace Cole what his shot should look like. Um, and now remember, I'm only looking at episodes one and two, and you know episodes six, seven, eight, nine, ten haven't been written yet. Mm-hmm. So I don't know the whole backstory of the swing. I just know that he has a mental deficiency that he can't get his swing, his glitch. He, he has a glitch with his shot. So there wasn't really a lot of you know, history behind it because it wasn't in any of the Mighty Ducks movies. So I couldn't go back and do back research. I could go and do back research, the knuckle puck, the flying V, all that stuff. I could do that. That's easy. Um, but I was kind of creating something that wasn't really written into uh, on paper yet. And we have all seen, if you haven't seen it, you got to go on YouTube and or Google search Charles Barkley golf swing. Oh, it's incredible. And it is, it's, 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 I, I, I can't believe it's a real thing. I really <laughs> cannot. It's one of those things you're like, no, no, it's fake. The Charles Barkley golf swing is what we pattern a Jace Cole glitch swing. And then when the doubles came in, we had to kind of work with them. It was harder to teach them how to be bad at hockey than it was to teach Jace Cole to do the glitch swings. He, <laughs> he did it and he really didn't have a lot of problem doing it. Where I took these other actors that have been playing hockey for, or athletes, stunt guys, that have been playing hockey for you know, 25 years. And they, they, they couldn't get it down we had a lot more work with them interesting interesting. awesome well again we're we're way over time here so we could probably talk to you for a few more hours maybe we'll have you back on uh to discuss you know whatever your future projects are but we appreciate the time six six months of mighty ducks stuff in my head (laughs) so we can talk about we could talk about every single character okay what they like what they don't like their behaviors you know, who had an interest in who, you know, who, I, you know, all sorts of stuff. So you have a lot of like, uh, a lot of stuff. I'm never going to say anything that's going to hurt anyone's feelings. Right. But there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happened on the show that really made us a family. They, they really did. What's well, excellent. Yeah. I mean, just like a little teaser. What's like the juiciest tidbit you can give us in like 30 seconds? I the think juiciest I'm... tidbit? Yeah. Kind of on the spot. Uh, uh, you know what? I, I'm not going to go with the main characters. I'm going to go the juiciest tidbit. Is that word the juiciest thing? Has to be, you know, the dynamic between. And we talk about spinoffs. You know, we uh-huh. joke that Coach Mitch and Sway. It has to be with Marnie and uh, that coach. What was the coach's Toby. name again? Toby, Marnie and Toby. I mean. In all honesty, you could do a spinoff of them. <laughs> I want to see where their characters developed because, I mean, Marnie, she was just so brilliant as an actor. I, I don't know if that's just the way she is or if she was acting, but whenever I saw her, she was always on point. Mm-hmm. And then Toby was just so... I don't want to say creepy. I don't want to say swarmy, 
But, you know, watching the camera pan back and forth when they're out at the picnic at the lake, it's kind of like, I want to see where these two characters go. I like it. So I would love to see a a Marty and Toby spinoff. It doesn't even have to be like Mighty Ducks related. It could just be a a whole separate show without even hockey. (laughs) But to see them date and, you know, they get engaged and they're married and what their life is like and there is a family. I mean, you could do some really, really cool stuff with that. That's, that's, yes, we're we're all upset that we're not going to have a season three. We really are. But I really want to see where those characters, where they were going to develop. It would be really, really cool. I mean, to see where, where Brady Noon, does does his character go off to college? You know, mm-hmm. they wrote in a scene that, you know, I'm from a small school, you no know, Wisconsin. Would you be interested in talking to us? I went to the University of Wisconsin with the Madison. So you kind of know where that line came from. <laughs> I kind of nudged <laughs> I nudged Goldsmith. You gotta put a Wisconsin line in there. He put that in there for me. So thank you very much for that. The, does he go off and does he play at Wisconsin? You know, there's there's a lot of unanswered things that you just never really we're not going to really find out so right. we just have to speculate so i'm a little bummed that we're not gonna have a season three maybe we do maybe in a spinoff maybe something has happened maybe do a show that is hockey related they talk about ducks and talk about game changers and they talk about where these characters actually went to that isn't a direct link to ducks but you talk about you know you know or maybe we have more podcasts about this and we kind of create you know yeah, where oh, these yeah. characters actually go and you get enough followers and that enough hits on it that Disney is forced to do a season three, a season four, a season five. So what we're trying That's to do with 300 happen. episodes yep. strong. We got That's backstories for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. I think it's great. So you guys want that and you have my full support. You want to make it happen. I will back that 100%. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We have another uh Art of the team. We got our we got our <laughs> guy. All right. So there you go. Christopher V. Nelson again at Christopher underscore V underscore Nelson on Instagram, hockeyforhollywood.com. For us, the quacktech.com. Go there, contact us at quacktechpod on Twitter, Facebook.com slash quacktechpod. Go to iTunes or, or really anywhere you listen. Give us five stars, write a review. Tell us uh tell us your spin-off ideas so we can start making these happen. And thanks to our producers, Alexander, the newest producer, just uh, came in today, I think. And remember, ducks fly together. Ducks fly together.